looking good to me. You're festive. Thanks, I'm man. festive. Happy Halloween. Yeah. <laughs> Happy Halloween. Hell yes. Now, where are you checking in from? Jersey? Yeah, Jersey. Yeah. How about you? Canada? Uh, Buffalo. Buffalo, New York. Buffalo. Close by. Okay. All right. Yep. Yep. Buffalo, New York. You've been to Buffalo, New York before, I'm sure? I have many times. Okay. Do we treat you well when you come through town? Always. Always. Good. Well, that's good to hear because we're the city of good neighbors and that's, that's what we hope. So uh, go Bills, yada, yada. My, my fiance, she's actually in Brick Township right now. Oh, okay. That's about an, an hour from me, hour and 15 minutes from me right now. Okay. All yeah. right. And what, what town are you in in Jersey? I'm in the Bergen County. Bergen County. All right. Yeah. North, North Jersey. Copy that. All right, yeah. man. Well, welcome to I Ask No One. I'm Kevin. So nice to meet you, dude. Really appreciate the time and, and cheers, man. So next month is 22 years since the debut record of Thursday, a record called. Yeah. Ricky. Yeah, man. It's crazy. Flies by, huh? Salute. Really does. Really does. That's insane. <laughs> well, you, you've got, a bunch of different projects you know you got frank arrow and the future violence you got uh, uh the uh, ageist yep and, and the heavy uh, van vandals is it the the heavy vessel vessel heavy vessel yeah heavy right. vessel yeah heavy vessel is that like a solo project how's that going it was it was my it's my buddy brian louis band he he kind of uh did it as a solo thing recorded the record himself and then kind of you know, was like, Hey, I need some, some players. So can you, can you just help me out? So I helped him out for a little while. Right on. But then I moved, but then I moved to New Jersey. So it's hard to have rehearsals. So I think they, they have a new band called the twin, which is, you know, it's a different band, but it's essentially the same people minus me. Oh, okay. Did you say it's a band yeah. called the twin? The twin. Yeah. All right. Well, I'm a twin, uh, identical. Oh, twin. There, there's five pairs of twins in our family. It's pretty crazy, but whoa that's insane yeah why is it called the twin is he a twin uh well i know that the the guitar player or actually the bass player is from minnesota and you know obviously he's a he's bound to be a twins fan so i don't know if that is the is the reason okay. but you know it's I, i'm sure it uh leans that way pretty heavily gotcha well i'd like to start off with a little fact of the day today uh there's two birthdays i wanted to acknowledge before we get into it tucker uh, K.K. Downing, the almighty K.K. Downing, lead guitarist, Judas Priest. He's 70 years old today. Damn. Crazy. Yeah. Do you like priests? Did you guys jam? Of course. Priests? Yeah. Who doesn't? Who doesn't? You know what I mean? Yeah, man. I, I actually just saw them in Louder Than Life in Kentucky for my very first time. And uh, holy shit. I mean, Rob Halford at age 72 just, yeah. I mean, it's just. Still killing it whoa you know it caught me off i knew he was good i did not know he was that good i mean he was literally jaw dropping you know looking up at the moon and the sky and like how for it was just it was too metal yeah yeah absolutely um and you strike me maybe as a stone temple pilots fan so scott wyland's the late great would have been 54 today i mean i think they write great songs i wouldn't say that i'm necessarily a huge fan but they do write some great songs okay and rest in peace scott wyland of course Yes. Are there songs that they've written that stand out to you? Which ones do you like? I mean, shit. Uh, I don't even know. I'm blanking on some of their songs right now. I mean, the hits, obviously, like. Yeah, Plush, Interstate Love Song and Vaseline. Plush. Plush is a, is a sick song. Vaseline is a great song for like a, you know, kind of soft song for them. I, I, that, that song always struck me. Great video, too. Yes, yes. In fact, last week I had a gentleman, Kevin Kerslake, uh, on the show, and he's he's got his handprint all over uh, 80s and 90s music videos, including Stone Temple Pilot, Interstate Love Song, Vaseline, um, Days of the Week. So that episode will be up soon, actually. So you can just click above if you want to check that out. But just there. Just, <laughs> yeah, give me a minute. I got to edit. Uh, so Maybe it's right there. Yeah, yeah it's somewhere. Well, for me, I don't know where I am in your screen, so. Yeah, that's like the Brady Bunch, <laughs> right? Brady Bunch. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> we, got, we got Tucker Rule here, drummer. I'm a drummer. I admire your drumming. You've made a career out of drumming. Um, and today's quote is by a fella who's on the $100 bill. 
Ben Franklin. And this is actually one of my uh, go-to quotes in my head, actually. I will speak ill of no man and speak all the good I know of everybody. I think um, in this day and age, uh, there's, you know, different in, in your industry and in all industries, there's people that really get off on gossip and talking about others. So I'm sure, you know, uh, someone that uh, you can name that really bases their conversations around, you know, other people instead of being in the moment. So for think, sure. Yeah. 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 People that talk shit. Basically people who talk shit. Don't be a dick. That's the core. Yeah, don't be a, don't dick. be a dick. Right. It's it's so much you have to be so clever to be a dick. It's just so much easier to be nice. Yeah, yeah, that is true. That is true. I, I I'll just share with you my favorite quote is uh from The Rock. And The Rock says, The Rock uh once said, It's nice to be important, it's even more important to be nice. So boom. Words to live by on that one. That's right, that's right. So you're a drummer. Why the drums? What got you started on playing the drums, man? Uh, I don't know, man. It was just something that I always, you know, in the car, it was easier to air drum than it was to air guitar for me for some reason. And I don't know. I just, I, I grew up kind of a, an athlete, you know, I played football, baseball, basketball, soccer, wrestled, you know, I did, I did all of it. So, and then I became a skateboarder and, uh, I don't know. I just feel like drums just naturally were, it's, it's the, the more athletic, if you will, of the instruments. So I kind of just, you know, sports and, and that, not, not that they're, they're very linked, but it's, it's a very physical thing, drums is. So I kind of just gravitated towards, towards that. Yeah, that's totally understandable. It is physical. And were you the captain on any of your teams? Did you think of- I was, I was. I was the captain of my baseball team, captain of my football team. Um, so yeah, for sure. There you go. And I, I grew up, I, yeah. I grew up in an athletic family. You know, my mom coached my baseball teams, you know, uh, as when I was, uh, you know, a kid. Um, so, you know, my, my uncle tried out for the Yankees at one point. So I, you know, I had, I had sports in my blood and, you know, athletic shit in my blood. So. And you carried that right over to the stage and you're the captain on stage with your bands. I mean, you, you feel that when you're performing to all those people, right? I mean, you're, you're steering that, you're steering that ship. They're going this well, way. Yeah. Yeah. And that, and, and, you know, for better or for worse, I guess you could say, because, you know, with, with a band like Thursday, we don't always necessarily play to a metronome. So it's, you know, it, you have to steer it right. You don't want to, you don't want to drive too fast if you will. And you don't want to drive too slow either. So it's, it's, you know, it's always a crapshoot when you, when you do the floor count, you know, you never know what you're going to get. That's a really cool way to put it. Yeah. One, two, three, four, and just whatever happens happens and yeah, play from here not here yeah man exactly exactly when you when you start thinking that's when you start losing the fun yeah have you been up on stage and you just start thinking and what do you what do you do maybe to kind of get right back on track just say hey what the fuck tucker i mean i do sometimes and i and i i find myself sometimes being ungrateful you know and i have to snap myself out of that you know i i i miss a snare hit or something and it takes me out of it and i get mad and i start playing angry and that can be good because you can, you know, you, you get a lot of energy when you're angry, but it can also be bad. Like it could take you out of the moment, take out of you, take, take you out of the, the realization that people paid money to come see you and they're excited and they don't need you up there being a little baby, you know, because you, you, you missed a snare hit or you, you, you know, drop the stick or something, you know, or you can't hear yourself in your monitors, you know, that's always a big thing. Yeah. So, uh, sorry, I'm getting a phone call. Hold on. Uh, decline. Sorry about that. All good, brother. Uh, so, you know, I, I think that, you know, yeah, there's no way to really snap yourself out of it in the moment, uh, other than like, you know, finish the song, try to take a deep breath. And then, you know, every song is a new chance, I guess you could say. Yeah. Re respect what happened, but don't, don't over respect it, you know, forget about yeah. it and move yeah. on. Because 90% of the time, nobody in the audience, unless, you know, a, a fellow drummer's there who's watching, you know, is going to notice, you know, any of these things, you know, the, the average listener is just going to see it as like, you know, oh, shit, he dropped a stick and he picked up another one. That's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I don't play guitar. That's a Static X guitar signed. Uh, I play the drums, but 
I will say I saw Metallica for my 40th time a few weeks ago, uh, live, wow. you know, right up there, right out front. My twin brother and I usually were the twins right up front. So um, it was during Through the Never that James Hatfield was playing and the amount of millions of times I've heard that song, but he flubbed it, you know, and um, yeah. He Sorry, get another phone call. <laughs> my bad. He flubbed it. He, yeah, he flubbed it. And it was about 10 seconds later. I, I was still smiling from him fucking it up. And he, he looked at me and he was just like, oh, whatever, I messed up. <laughs> and that was one of the cooler moments I've had. So yeah, to have those mistakes and just, you know, acknowledge it, smile it off and then, you know, move, move forward. It's um, really trivial, you know what I mean? Because you're, you're, you know, you're not just up there doing it for yourself. You know, there's, there's, whether there's 50 people in the room or, you know, 150 or 1500 you know it's all the same show it should be the same show you should get the same feeling you know yes exactly uh sugar percussion did they create a snare for you uh they they made a snare for me but it you know it wasn't like specially created for me it's just an alaskan yellow cedar uh snare drum that's just over there uh yeah i just i i, I love snare drums and i collect them you know and i i i don't have a favorite wood snare until now now i have the sugar percussion it's one of my one of my favorites so i've, I mean, I've never owned a cedar drum huh and what what and he, uh, yeah that's where, where is sugar percussion where are they based out of tucker i want to say i, I want to say oregon mm, okay but i'm not 100 percent sure um i i play uh i have a bunch of friends that do this 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 drum group on on instagram called the indie drummer collective and uh you know, we kind of had like a, we have a nerd slack section where we talk about gear and stuff. And, and my friend Zach Lind of Jimmy Eat World got one of these uh, Alaskan yellow cedar drums. And, you know, I've been following the sugar, sugar percussion for a while. And uh, yeah, he just said it's amazing. So I was like, oh, I got to get one. And they do this amazing payment plan where you can you can basically spend like $80 a month, you know, wow. until you pay it off. Yeah, which is pretty awesome. Wow. Getting a sugar snare uh what what do you like about the snare what what attracts you to the snare drum uh that particular one or snare drums in general just in general you collect snare drums so that's that's pretty awesome i just think it's a it's a it's a a personality thing you know what i mean like it's it's kind of like you know you have your kit that's 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 your signature right but then the snare is just so personal because it's the thing that is just the closest to you and you're you're hitting it the most and uh you know i just think that i don't know they're cool you know, snare drums are just cool and they're all different. Like right here, I have this, uh, you know, obviously at my kid, I have this fiberglass Jenkins and Martins kit that I, that I, you know, I just got as well. I just, I just love having different, uh, you know, different mediums of snares. Like I, this is a fiberglass. That one's a yellow cedar. I've got a, a bronze snare from Q. I've got a aluminum snare from Q. You know, I just like having everything because I love to record and I, you know, I have a studio in here and I record in here. So, you know, having all sorts of sounds is not such a bad thing. Sure, sure. You mentioned you mentioned the uh, the drumming collective that you have on Instagram. What was the name of that group? It's the Indie Drummer Collective. Indie Drummer. Did I see you were uh, you were covering Yes's "Owner of a Lonely Heart" on that? I did. I did. Yeah, I did. You ever yeah, think each each month yeah. each month we have a, a theme, you know, where we where you know like. Like this month's theme was Halloween, so I did no doubt uh, spider webs. Um, so yeah, that was that that theme. I believe was like a a, a Prague theme. I think that that yes uh, yes month. So you you hit it out of the park, man. I mean, what comes thanks, from, man. Yeah, that was you know you go from Thursday and your rock and roll groups, then you you cover some you know poppy the yes is poppy side in the eighties. Uh, yeah. You know, they, that song was in Grand Theft Auto Vice City. You ever play that game before? I've not, no, but I've, well, actually I've played Grand Theft Auto, but never like the first one I've played, you know, I've never, never, never continued the, uh, the, however many there are of that. Yeah. We're, we're, there's about a 10 year gap in our ages. So that sounds right, man. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, just I did, however, I did, however, play drums on the grant, whatever Grand Theft Auto just came out, the online version no shit uh yeah i forget what which one it is um do you know what it's called the online version of grand theft auto it's like oh. the newer newer one i think it came out in 2019 
you laid down some drums for a video game. Have you done other video I, games before? I haven't. Well, I mean, Thursday was on the Tony Hawk Pro Skater, uh, the first one. Yeah. Uh, do, doing a cover of a uh, – oh, shit, what cover did we do? I can't remember, but yeah. I'll so, yes, I have played on video games, but not, not you know, this was my first time actually playing on the soundtrack of a video game. Damn. Well, you being a skateboarder and being on Tony Hawk Pro Skater 1 soundtrack, that must have been pretty sweet, huh? It was it was pretty cool, man. It was pretty cool. Yeah, you played on the uh, the Warp Tour with a band called Body Jar in 2001. And uh, Body Jar is not the same was featured in Tony Hawk Pro Skater 3. And, oh, uh, wow. Yeah, Warp Tour in 2001. You got any memories of that stand out to you? Uh... Yeah, man. Just like we, we only did a couple shows on, on the 2001 version. And I just remember it being like really nerve wracking because it's you don't really get a sound check. You just kind of get your gear up there and you just four count and there you go. You know, you're in. So it's it's a wild time. Warp Tour is awesome, man. I, you know, I miss it and I don't miss it as well because it's a very long tour. It's very tough because you're out in the sun. Not a lot of showers, uh, you know, but it's it's a great time and and fans seem to love it so i think that's what it's all about yeah that was the same year blick 182 came out with their take off your pants and jacket and they appeared a few times on that warp tour 2001 um but there were other bands i took a look at that were appearing fucking misfits uh weezer alien and farm some 41 i mean th these guys were hitting their records you know a fat lip and shit pennywise who i just saw for the first time um, I had some funny moments with the lead singer of Pennywise. Any any moments with him that stand out to you from that tour, or any of the bands I just mentioned? Uh, man, I I just remember <laughs> watching Penny Pennywise all the time. You know, they were always great. You know, um, I don't know, I, not very many funny moments that I can remember. I I just I just remember fond moments. You know, just a lot of uh, you know, it, it's as as a band member, as a person that that's playing Warped Tour, you also get to be a fan and you get to watch bands which is pretty awesome like some of my favorites were i, I loved watching bad religion you know when um back in the day when brooks wackerman was in the band because he's such a monster drummer uh he now is an event sevenfold uh but yeah so it, like i i just always kind of nerded out and love to watch the drummers <laughs> to be honest with you sure sure and you you're at riot fest chicago dude this past uh it was the last month so i'm sure you saw yeah. some pretty badass drummers at that festival right i did I did, I did, I yeah. did absolutely. Well, how yeah, was some some? Go ahead, sorry. It just, yeah, how was how was that whole experience playing to? I mean, it was probably like thirty, forty thousand people right out front there in Chicago. It was awesome. Um, you know, uh, it was kind of it was our third show back. You know, after almost six hundred and thirty something days, I, I think it was. So, you know, it was for me. It was it was more exciting than than your typical show just because we were you know all hanging out together and you know i got to see some of our crew and then i also got to see a bunch of old friends you know that that i haven't seen because we haven't toured in a while so it was it was real you know the whole thing was exciting and you know riot fest always does it right so we, i you can't complain and, and chicago is one of my favorite cities to play in general anyway yeah Why and i don't and i don't I just, we always have a good reaction in Chicago and I, 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 I can honestly say, knock on wood, um, that I've never really had a bad show in Chicago. Fuck yes. And that's a yeah. lot of touring. And, and you just mentioned it, you're back, you're back touring after the COVID pandemic, you're back, you know, seeing your guys face to face instead of over Zoom. I know we were supposed to have our chat last week, you know, no problem at all, but you had a session that came up. I did. I did. Yeah. How'd that go, man? Good. It went great, man. It went great. It was, you know, I did, I did 12 songs in three days. So it was, you know, my, my body was on fire, you know, as far as pain, but you know, we got through it, you know, so it was, it was a good time, but yes. And that's the good thing about, you know, the only good thing about the pandemic for, for music was, you know, learning how to do stuff at home. And, uh, you know, and now, now that, now that we're kind of back a little bit, like you can go and do sessions at studios, which is, which is a lot of fun, <laughs> you know, which was kind of not, not happening in the in the midst of the pandemic yeah right you know it and was this last week with thursday you got a new record coming out or or these no this was this was just another artist um that that i got hired for so you know it was uh 
so it was one of those things where you kind of learn things as quick as possible and, and do the best you can, you know, coming up with creative parts. Fun. Yeah. Like in a creative element, do you do a lot of writing yourself? Do you, does you start with the drums in the studio and then work elsewhere? How does that work over the past 22 years of making music? Um, I mean, with Thursday, especially like somebody would come in with a riff and then, you know, I would try to come up with something, you know, I always liked to follow the riff when I write. Um, so I, I don't necessarily write to bass as much, you know, I, I kind of like to follow the riff to make it angular and make it, make it exciting. Um, so someone would come in with a riff and then I would try to put that anchor in um, with the drum beat and then, you know, kind of, kind of go from there and then, you know, things start to snowball from that and then we kind of trim the fat once we get a full you know the full body done we kind of trim the fat take away what doesn't what doesn't work what doesn't need to be there gotcha um we recently lost charlie watts the almighty charlie watts the drummer who really set the bar for how long you know you could do this thing and yeah uh, your drummers from that have inspired you back then and still inspire you now to just that influence your pocket and your groove? Uh, Brooks, I mean, I know you mentioned Brooks Wackerman and some of these other guys, but. Yeah, I love Brooks. I love Josh Fries. Uh, you know, I love uh, Stanley Randolph. I love, you know, Stuart Copeland, obviously, is one of my favorites. I love John Bonham, you know, you know, these core players, you know, these these dudes that are un, unfuck with um, But I also love, you know, uh, Aaron Sterling, who plays for John Mayer, and he does a lot of, uh, you know, session stuff and home recording. He's amazing. Um, Nate Smith is one of my favorite current drummers uh, that I just, I just have so many saved videos on my Instagram of, of Nate Smith and uh, Aaron Sterling. Um, Nate Smith, who is he with, if you know what I'm asking? Uh, he does a lot of solo stuff. You know, just yeah. him, and he, he he does a lot. He he's just I couldn't tell you who he's with currently, but I know he plays for a lot of people. He does a lot of jazz stuff too. Okay, gotcha. Uh, speaking of Instagram, I mean, I was looking at some of your followers. You know, who's checking out what's going on in the world of Tucker Rule, and these are two drummers that I am very inspired by. Uh, just little nuances that they do, and that's Jay Weinberg currently with Slipknot. And yeah, I was in their all out life music video, you know, link above for that. Sick. And yeah, dude. Yeah. It was look for the wolf ring hanging out the boss. <laughs> I'm just like, you know, bashing the shit, you know, it was, it was great. And uh, Ray Luzier, who I actually met again at, at louder than life. These drummers are, are badass in their own right. Right. Yeah, for sure. I mean, it's just yeah. heavy. Jay, Jay is a monster too, Jay, Jay Weinberg. And, you know, we, we've known each other for a really long time. He used to come to Thursday shows when he was a kid. Uh, so, you know, we kind of, you know, I've kind of known, I've seen him on the arc and now to see him on the big stage, is like a really uh, fulfilling feeling for me because he deserves it. And, you know, obviously he rips and he's got the talent, but he's also a good dude. And I, I always say it's, it's like, you know, 75% being a good dude and like 25 percent talent but that dude has both you know 100 percent. so yeah that, that, i think you're and also yeah oh please go ahead and ray 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 is a badass you know that dude is he he can play anything and you know ambidextrous it's just it's crazy to watch him play yeah the things he does the he he like comes up high the stuff he does with his, his neck and just the the showmanship of it you yeah know? Uh, as a as a performer uh, i've been up on stage a few times in my life you know i jam here and there but uh yeah, yeah ray, ray luzier is a badass and hopefully i could get a, him or uh jay weinberg on you know i asked no one one of these days that'd be fucking sick but yeah two legends man two legends you know it and jay weinberg for our viewers his dad uh oh my god his dad of the east street band what's his first name mighty max yeah yeah max weinberg so Max Weinberg, yeah. he's in uh, East Street Band, and he was in one of the late night uh, uh, bands. Was it Conan O'Brien or something? Or, or yeah, the Max Wein the Max Weinberg Seven, Conan O'Brien. Yeah, Conan O'Brien. Okay, 
And you were on Seth Meyers. You, you played drums on Late Night with Seth Meyers. How the hell is that experience, Tucker? It was awesome, man. That band rules. The people in the band rule. Uh, you know, obviously it's nerve wracking, you know, because it's it's it's, you know, television. But, you know, I had a blast. They make you feel real comfortable. And uh, it, it's nice to, you know, as they say, give the drummer some every once in a while. And, and Eric Lederman, who kind of who is one of the producers, he's a he's a drummer and huge music fan. So it, it's it's just, you know, I think the drumming community owes a lot to that dude for uh you know giving the drummers you know a little a little bit of love yeah it's a big stage big stage for us drummers up there to to get a shot at, at tv like that you know it's it's real 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 awesome experience yeah uh, bron daler of mastodon he was on one of those shows too and it brought the mic on him for some jokes and bullshit but uh love that guy uh but did you write your own parts for that late night show did you just kind of jam uh, well, you, you kind of, you, before the show, you kind of write little things with the band, um, and then you, you, you play them on stage. So it's, yeah, you do kind of write your own parts. Okay. Yeah. That looked really fun. Uh, I could only imagine, yeah. you know, lights, action, and then, you know, you get the crowd and everything. That's sweet. Yeah. It's so much fun, man. It's, it's, it's a lot of fun and it, it really kind of, you know, it's a good test of your, of your, of being calm. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Calm waters run deep. That's for sure. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Uh, this month is uh, three years since I lost my good buddy, Michael J. Holden. Mike Holden, um, fan of all sorts of music, including Thursday. In fact, we were just talking about All Out Life with Slipknot. Um, the day he passed away, I got that opportunity on my plate and booked the next flight to L.A. I flew from Buffalo to LA and that moshing, I showed all the kids how it's done. <laughs> and, you know, just that whole experience was for Mike. And so was his podcast. You know, for every subscriber, I donate $10 to the American Foundation Suicide Prevention. So if you find any value uh, to our viewers here, you know, a subscriber like always appreciated. But uh, I'm on the board there. And um, if I may, you know, there's no stigma on this podcast and nowhere around here for, for me and for us, but have you lost anyone in the industry that uh, to suicide in particular that, that has continued to inspire you? I mean, yeah, you know, I feel like, you know, I've been hit by a bunch of people that are not necessarily like close friends or, or actually even friends, but people that I know of. So it's, you know, it's always a horrible thing to, to hear about, you know, and, honestly when we, when we started the band when we started thursday we actually in our first record put a, a number for a suicide hotline in, in in the booklet so you know obviously we've we've all been touched by it in in some way shape or form and you know it's it's always good to know that there are people out there and there is help out there and there are people you can call and you know things you can do to to kind of try to reverse that feeling as much as you can yeah absolutely it is a chemical imbalance in the brain and something that if you have you know there's way you you can't control that part but there's ways to you know there's one thing that i heard back when i was struggling uh from brian head welch of corn you know it always gets better and it certainly does it gets better so um depression has no face i think uh chester bennington lincoln park chris cornell you know, these are big, big surprises to seemingly the happiest people you could possibly imagine. So it's nice to check in with others. And, um, you know, this is a part of each episode I like to address with people that I admire, such as yourself. So yeah, I appreciate it, man. Thanks. Yeah, likewise, man. I, I really do. I appreciate it as well. Of course. You, uh, you got a Dove logo. Uh, what, what does the Dove mean to you? Did you create that logo? I did not, but, you know, I think our singer kind of came up with it, our singer Jeff, and, uh, you know, it's just kind of like a, an anonymous sign, you know, that you wouldn't necessarily, necessarily see for a band, but, you know, it, I always thought it was sort of a peaceful, you know, doves stand for peace and stuff like that, so I, I just, you know, whenever I see it, I feel calm, you know, <laughs> so hopefully it brings other people a little bit sense of calm. Yeah, there's, uh, there's guitarists out there, in particular Mark Tremonti, who has the dove on the fretboard. And I've been seeing that a lot lately, just doves being you know, popping out of nowhere. I like it. I, I think it's cool. Um, you ever see Home Alone? I, of course I have. 
Yeah, of course you have. You've seen Home Alone 1, Home Alone 2. Anything after Absolutely. that? Absolutely. Who gives a shit? Who gives a shit? Yeah. I see your Dove logo. I think of... Uh, <laughs> uh, by the way, Ryan, this next segment's all for you, dude. Uh, uh, Mr. Duncan's toy chest in Home Alone 2. You know, he's got these turkey yeah. gloves. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Friends forever, you know. And, yeah. <laughs> and uh, my mom and I, we exchanged doves. And uh, it just got me thinking, you know, just the way my brain works. I see a dove, you know, I think of uh, Marv and Harry and Home Alone just wiping out in one and yeah. two. Into the Nothing state. but pain. Oh, my God. I mean, we're entering the holiday season. You get these movies coming out um in, the, in Halloween movies and then November maybe I got to sit down through a bullshit Hallmark movie again yeah. with Ashlyn <laughs> but then yeah. it comes it never gets old I mean are there some moments from either of those movies that really stand out that will always deliver a laugh I mean it just I don't know I, I always whenever I watch Home Alone now I think about how crazy it is how good of an actor Macaulay Culkin was being that young and being, you know, kind of running that whole, uh, owning that whole show or that whole movie, you know, he was the star. So it's just, I don't, I, I get a laugh from it every time, but I'm, I'm more taken aback by like someone who can actually perform like that, being <laughs> that young. Yeah. It, oh my God, the talent. And then he was in, uh, he was in The Good Son. You ever see The Good Son with uh, Frodo Baggins was in there, Elijah Wood. I, th I've, I, I know I've seen it because I remember the name, but I couldn't tell you what it's about or I couldn't remember a, a friggin scene to save my life about it. So yeah, Macaulay Culkin, he's in that movie. And I remember as a kid, you know, my name's Kevin. So I, he was my childhood hero, you know, and he still is. But he was in this movie and he told Frodo Baggins basically uh, it, verbatim. He said, do me a favor. Don't fuck with me. <laughs> so yeah. seeing that was like, whoa. And then. You know, he's in Richie Rich and, and some of those other movies, but Macaulay Culkin, he's into music as well. I'd love to have him on some one day. And uh, whether it's Marv hitting the nail on the foot, you know, the paint cans to the face, uh, love, love, love that shit. It's just too good. Yeah. And, and Marv's quality got, flicks. He's got a falsetto, you know, voice, right? You just when he screams, you know, that spider and then the, the pigeons in the second one. So, uh, this time of the year, though, do you have a movie? Do you have a go-to Halloween movie that you like to watch or you can't miss? Uh, go-to Halloween movie? I just, we, we always, my wife and I put on something scary. So, like, you know, some, some are good, some are bad. Some I get, like, 15 minutes and I'm like, this movie sucks. I turn it off. But, you know, we always try to watch a Halloween, you know, like the actual Halloween series, one of those movies. Um you know so I, I have a i have a toddler so we kind of put on like spooky you know shows for her that are kid friendly <laughs> so i my, my my life has turned from watching gory you know stuff to like toddler ghosts and things like of that nature is there a scariest movie you've ever seen in your life that you just can never watch again uh i wouldn't say i could never watch again but there's there yeah the movies like like seven always freaked me out you know and i wouldn't necessarily say that's a scary movie but it's it's a it's a it's, it freaks me out um and i just remember all the friday the 13th being terrifying when i was a kid and all the halloween's being terrifying yeah. um even like the final destination movies are freak me out yeah yeah right these trucks on the throughway and the logs and everything it's like you know. yeah because it's all real shit stuff that can happen yeah. <laughs> you know yeah. yeah yeah i couldn't sleep the other night so between 1 and 5 a.m i uh <laughs> i went to amazon i rented alien one and alien two and i watched the whole thing i've never seen those movies before holy shit yeah some, they're pretty fucked up some crazy deaths and i don't think your daughter birdie would like those very much I love not at all love your daughter's name birdie dylan thank you and your wife, Lexi. How are you guys doing with all this COVID bullshit and everything? Uh, actually, pretty good, man. Like, we, we, we had it a lot better than most because we, we had Birdie right in the beginning of the pandemic on the 27th of March. So we couldn't go anywhere anyway because we had an infant. So, you know, we kind of, like, shut ourselves in our house. And, you know, it actually wasn't too bad because, for me, I got to, you know, for better or for worse, I got to be home. I didn't you know, I could tour, obviously. So I got to spend the first 
you know, year, year and a half home with my, with my baby. So that, that was kind of like a blessing, you know, you know, even though I was out of work, I still got to be a, you know, a full-time dad, which was nice. You've got to apply birdie to a, like a model agency or something. She's got the big, <laughs> it really has blue eyes, man. Yeah. Thank you, man. Yeah. She, she's, she's a, she's a little sweetheart too. So we, you know, we try to not tell her she's pretty too much. You know, we try yeah. to tell her you're smart. You're going to be a boss. You know, you're going to be an ass kicker. <laughs> That's right. North Jersey style. Yeah. 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 Kindness. All of that. You know, we make, we, you know, we have a, a mirror in our bedroom that she always goes up and we're like, say good morning to Birdie. And she kisses the mirror and we're like, you're kind, you're mindful, you're sweet, you know, you're compassionate, you know, give her all these words that, that, you know, well, that's, that's that, that are important. Oh, that's yeah. great. I'm, I'm taking notes here for someday, Tucker. So I'll, yeah, I'll let you know someday when yeah, you know, get my own little twist on that. Yeah, yeah, man. Those are the things that matter, though. You know what I mean? Like yeah. these these looks, we get so into the the way people look, and it's like really, the only thing that matters is is how you treat other people. So. Yep, uh, absolutely agree. Life is short, but I think. You achieve immortality by your relationships and the way you treat other people. Um, I think that goes a really, really long way, especially these days. So absolutely. Uh, going back to drumming real quick, just finishing up here. Um, I would just like to acknowledge some of my favorite drummers and I, maybe they've influenced you too. Lars Ulrich of Metallica, Dave Grohl, Nirvana and Foo Fighters, but Nirvana and Dave Grohl, the drummer. I love Dave Grohl, the drummer. And Sean Kinney, Alice in Chains. Those bands uh, along the way, have they influenced you? You've seen them live before back in the day? I mean, absolutely Nirvana uh, has, has influenced me. Just the power of Dave Grohl is ridiculous. And then also uh, the Foo Fighters Color and Shape, you know, which Dave played everything on. Uh, I love that record. I love the drumming on that record. So that, that heavily influenced me for sure. And, you know, Lars... Lars to me is more of a drum sound than a player. You know what I mean? Those, those, those Metallica records just, you know, are like the black album and ride the lightning and all they just insane records. It's so good. Um, and those records will kind of stay with me forever, but uh, you know, and justice for all. Um, and obviously Alice in Chains, you know, I, I wasn't too heavy into the alternative uh, scene the alternative music scene if you will like the Seattle scene but I did love Nirvana I did love Soundgarden and I had a soft spot for Alice in Chains and Sean Kinney is definitely a monster drummer yeah Sean he uses nude Vaders so they're they're real dry and they don't go anywhere and uh geez <laughs> you hit it man Grohl I mean the way he you could you could hit a crash like this but I mean the just the the power and the aggression of that um yeah to, to kevin curse like he was just on he directed come as you are lithium sliver music videos and he spent a lot of intimate time with kirk cobain so again if you want to check that out you know it's somewhere it's just right there so check that out uh, lars Ulrich though black album they had this blacklist did you hear what they did with the blacklist they had about 52 54 artists that they like come out and do a track on the black album I was just listening to yeah. something last night, man. Is there, a, is there a song that Thursday or your boys, the future violence that you guys would hit on that record? I mean, I think any of them would be fun to be honest with you. Uh, any, any, that record's just so from front to back, just so sick. Uh, you know, uh, and I, again, I, I get back to the drum sound on that record. It's just uh, ridiculous. Yeah. You know, that, that, that was like, to me, how, how, like, that was the first time, like I, I heard drums in a weird way like obviously all the you know the john bonhams and all I, I love those drum sounds but these were just so different to me you know so so powerful i don't i don't know what it was but it just especially the snare drum was like holy shit this is next level yeah man you talk about snare drums uh in a year and a half in the life of metallica lars is quoted as saying uh if you want weight i'm your fucking guy so yeah Wait and the uh, got 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 that's the Sabbath true man. I got a crack symbol yeah. back there. The first symbol I ever cracked was the outro of that. But yeah, yeah, that's a sick sick inch. Uh, you know that 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 is like iconic. You know. Oh my god! Yeah, I was seriously thinking about getting those bars tattooed on me. The got 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 got. You know, it's just 
that snare drum sound. Um, by the way, I don't know if you knew what I asked no one's from, but it's from Wherever I May Roam. And to our viewers, if you're curious, you know, it's from the second verse of I, uh, Wherever I May Roam, where the, the crowd yells, I asked no one. <laughs> I wore this for you, dude. You performed at St. Vitus in New York. How the hell was yeah. that, man? Amazing. I think I've performed there with more bands than any other person uh, <laughs> on the planet. So, really? you know, that I used to live down the street, you know, some of my best buds own that place. So it's, it's like home to me, you know, oh. so I, I, it's a, it's a, it's a great place to see a show. It's a great place to play a show. They treat you well. They're all musicians to begin with. So, you know, they just do it right. I'm sure one of those bands is on the back of this shirt. My twin brother got this for me when he was in there, but we're talking about Nirvana. I don't know if you can read any of that, but. Oh yeah, yeah. All all of those. Yeah, it's a, it's insane the list of people that have played there. Yeah, and that really really recognizable. This yeah is, is really sweet. Yeah. So um, let's see. Just in closing, my man, uh, is there a dream tour that you would love to just you know go out and partake in? You know, with one of your bands to open up or to headline a band. Uh, is there a dream collaboration that you haven't done yet in your long ass career that you, you would love to do? I mean, yeah, man, I, there's, there's plenty. Like I, I would love to go on tour with the Foo Fighters just because they seem to be so much fun and they, they, you know, I just feel like they do everything right. And also, man, like I gotta say, like the only thing I can think about is actually getting back on tour, you know what I mean? In general, like, I feel like, you know, this year we kind of dipped our toe in that water a little bit, you know, and uh, hopefully next year, you know, there'll be a lot more people out and about a lot more shows happening. So I, I just think that getting music back on track uh, is what the dream is now for me. And I know a bunch of my peers. So. Amen to that, you know, save the stages and, and I'll be there. And if ever you come through Buffalo, man, um, I will bring, <laughs> See, Buffalo is one of the most underrated food towns in the whole country in the world. So I'll bring, bring you some stuff. Do you like craft beer, by the way? I don't drink. I, uh, I quit drinking like six years ago. Yeah, five years ago. That's great. Wow. But I still go to hang out. And some of my band members, I'm sure, would love some craft beer. Yeah. Yeah. Masuda Chow's is a good spot. The basis of Stone Sour, he has it. A lot of the bands that come through go over there. It's been open for about six years, so. That'd be a good time. And they got a lot of video games too. So maybe we could, I don't know, I'll challenge you in Mortal Kombat or something. I love that. Mortal Kombat 1. Mortal Kombat 1? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I used to play that at the arcade. Uh, are you a UFC fan? I watch it. Yes. You watch but, it. You know, yeah. I, I, watch, I, I, I tend to watch it too. Ryan and I yeah. were having a conversation. Like, what if Dana White for Halloween? He, they had a, a, a fight where he was in the background, just like Mortal Kombat 1, dressed up as Shang Tsung with the white hair, you know, and everything. I mean, that'd be a fucking riot. Dude. That would be pretty great. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Oh, my God. But, uh, brother, I want to thank you for coming on and shooting the shit. And uh, to our viewers, uh, if you like, again, what you saw, uh, subscribe, like, really appreciate it. Next week, I'm going to actually all, all the month of November, it's the, the month of gratitude. So having a lot of people that have influenced me over the years, uh, band instructor, yoga instructor, um, personal fitness, Dusty Paul, Mike Flory, Mike Ruggiero, it's going to be a lot of fun. Um, but stay happy, stay healthy, stay hungry, stay heavy. We'll see you, Tucker. Thank you so much. Thanks man. for having me, Kevin. Yeah, man, for sure. Later. Take care. Later.